Hi, I'm Rob, and here we're going to look at Ebene OEM's integration with Elasticsearch um, with a look at why we're doing that. So here I've got an application, and it's talking to an OLTP database. Uh, the orange arrows represent insert update delete requests, and the yellow arrows represent uh, read requests. And we're going against our OLT OLTP database, which is fully transactional. Uh, row storage uh, with B-trees plus bitmap indexes and maybe um, some inverted indexes and generally like small transactions. And what we're doing is we're going to add Elasticsearch um, to our application. Uh, it's not going to give us the same read consistency um, but it's a column store so it uh, using inverted indexes. It uh, also, generally speaking, you'd say it likes batch transactions. Uh, Elasticsearch have done a good job of mitigating those sorts of issues with uh, flush delays and things like that, and background merging of segments. So what we're looking to do with eBeam is to propagate insert, update, and delete requests from our LTP database to Elasticsearch. And with that, we can move some of the read load over to Elasticsearch. And with that, we've got um, at Elasticsearch horizontal scalability. Um, so as the load increases for reads, then we can, we can increase the um, size of the cluster for Elasticsearch quite easily. Effectively, what we've got is we've got our LTP database, which is optimized for the LTP traffic. So it has not that many indexes. Um, the more indexes we add, it hurts the inserts and updates. So we don't want to have too many indexes. Uh, it's going to be normalized with just a little bit of denormalization, perhaps. And it provides a very good source of truth database, um, being fully transactional. And on the other side, with Elasticsearch, we've got that optimized for search. We can have indexes on virtually everything, if we like. Um, and we can also have combined indexes, so indexes on first name plus last name plus address, etc. Um, and we can also do some more denormalization. So eBean's role in this is to sync the insert update delete changes across to Elasticsearch. Uh, it does this automatically, uh, taking into account denormalization that we might want. And we also want to support manual syncing, so you can code it your, yourself as well, so index by query, things like that. From a query perspective, we want to be able to execute our queries against either Elasticsearch or our OLTP database fairly easily. And we want to also support Elasticsearch-specific full-text queries. Um, and of course, you can always just query Elasticsearch directly yourself. So the caveats on these reads is that they're, they're not providing the same level of read consistency that we're getting off our old TP database. So there's a propagation delay of the changes, plus there's a flush delay on the Elasticsearch side. Um, the expressions against Elasticsearch will be generally case insensitive. Uh, Subqueries are not supported at this stage. And also, at this stage, predicates must be supported by the index that we're executing against. So we'll tend to need to denormalize um, for those predicates rather than use joins. So here we have an eBeam query. And it's finding orders where customer name starts with Rob, the status is complete, max row is 50. And then we've got set use dot for set use doc store true and what that says is execute this query against Elasticsearch um, if we didn't have that there then it would execute the query against our normal OLTP database so that makes it quite easy to obviously execute this query against one or the other uh, there's not too much of a code change there the caveat is that we to support the customer dot first uh, customer dot name expression, 
uh, we need customer name to be in the order index. So effectively we have to have that denormalization in the order index. If we executed that query, then you can see the JSON um, query, which is an elastic search query um, using the filtered context. I won't go into that detail uh, here. So to support that query, we needed some denormalization. So here we've got an example. We've got our order and this order we're going to denormalize and include the customer name and some order details. So here we've got order and on customer you can see doc embedded includes the ID and the name. So that means that the customer name is also embedded into the order document that's part of this, that's indexed into the orders. And below you can see there's a doc embedded on order details. So that means that the details are included in the order document as well. If we have a look at another example, so this is order again, and this time we're just de embedding or denormalizing more data into the order. So we've also got status, billing address, and for the billing address, we've got the next country details. So all of that is going into the order index. And if we look at order details, for each of the details, we're also going to embed the product SKU and name. So if we looked at that denormalization as SQL, um, we would say let's select from orders, from orders join customer, customer join address, from address join country, and orders join the detail, and order detail join product. So we would collect all of that information from that query and store it as JSON documents into the order index in Elasticsearch. So effectively here at this level of denormalization, um, we're getting quite a difference between a single document access in Elasticsearch, which would bring us all of that information versus doing the um, whatever this five joins. <coughs> so as a summary, we get to keep our OLTP database as a source of truth database with all transactional support. We get even to sync the insert update delete across to Elasticsearch. And with that, we are able to move uh, our read load or some of our read load across to Elasticsearch database, which is optimized for search. Uh, so it's got a column store approach with inverted indexes to make the searches very fast. Um, we can put more indexes on, so we can basically put pin indexes on most if not all of the properties. And we can also have more indexes on top of that, which is combined indexes, like for example, the order index. And that gives us fast searches with horizontal scaling. Um, so the URL below for further documentation. And that's it. Thank you.